we did it. This Tenere 700 is wild. To get here, it's been a journey. Over the last three episodes, I've done several weeks of learning, testing, comparing, and growing. We've covered suspension, the engine, the general setup, and in this final episode, I just wanna see where my limit is on this bike. We're gonna take the T7 real enduro riding, huge hills, single track, riverbeds, rocks, jumps, and a ton of fear-filled moments. Welcome to the final episode in the series. If you're new here, welcome to the Break Magazine T7 project. My name's Lel and this is my YouTube channel. I'm a filmmaker and bike journo. If you enjoy this video, liking and subscribing is massive for the YouTube algorithm or taking a trip to my Patreon would be amazing. Now let's go ride a bike somewhere it does not belong. The whole point of this project was to see how good I could make a Tenere 700. And the only way to find out how good it is, is to push the limits of what I think I'm capable of doing on a big bike. So I am gonna go trail riding today with my dad who's behind the camera on his enduro bike. It's time to go and get sketchy. Our plan was pretty simple. Over the day, we'd build the difficulty and that started by heading to the public motocross track to play around. Mostly this was because we needed a good thumbnail, but it was also a very good barometer for progress. At the start of this project, I'd been to that track and the bike felt awful. It no longer feels that way. Cleared the tabletop at the local motocross track. It's scary on a big bike, but my heart rate's at like 160. Adrenaline's high. You have to sack up a little bit. I'm not a big jumper. It doesn't look that hard, but this is like a, like a dirty little boulder field. That looks horrendous. Now she's getting interesting. Big hill climb, number one. I don't know where it goes. I do know that it's steep. And we're up. All right, wish me luck, people. really big hill done physical that's the biggest thing that's standing out is that this is like a, just a bit more physical than a dirt bike to ride like the riding position is quite upright and when you get it into that stuff you have to use a lot of upper body strength a lot of forearm strength to keep up with it to stay in the good uh, in good control got to lunch been riding for about two and a half hours and the Tenere's kind of blown me away a little bit it's so damn good I I'm able to take it to places where normally I think I would only take a dirt bike yeah the way we've got it set up and all the things we've got going on with it it, it works so well so um, I'm gonna get some food in me ride some more bread mm. Portuguese bread amazing especially that tuna mayonnaise stuff with the big bike the one thing you really got to be careful of is picking out that big stone under the rear wheel that would be catastrophic well we're in the rut now hey ray you wanted a uh, a lesson on riding dry ruts i think it's the same but i don't really know i'm coming out of it though that's my hot tip get out of them Woo, girl yeah, baby. <laughs> it was rough, now I can't see. Whew. Oh, damn. Good, eh? Yeah. Watch my 
my foot on that. Oh, heart rate's over 9,000. Oh God, I think we are riding this trail the wrong way. <laughs> I might need a catch on this one. Three, two, one. Bye. Sorry if my heavy breathing is a bit off-putting. <laughs> Sometimes the foot pegs are like a little bit low as well. Oh, <laughs> that's a tree. You all right? Yeah, I hit the tree. Uh, oh, that one? Yeah. <laughs> Tight in here on this. After hours of riding single track and with the sun setting, I had one last hill in mind to feel like I'd had a proper enduro test. It's a monster, steep, stepped out and really rocky. I've been looking at it since the start of this project. The problem with doing this at night is I can't see the hill. I can only see the floor. Woo! <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh, now I've got to go back down. Only because I don't know where this trail goes. This bike is a ripper. I can do way more on it than I was ever expecting. Jesus Christ, that's steep. <sighs> oh God. <sighs> this is terrifying. Coming back down, that felt like my limit. While the T7 flew up it easier than I'd ever imagined it would, keeping it controlled and in a straight line on the way down was terrifying. Achievable, but super oh, uncomfortable. Yeah, that looks so sketchy coming back it's down. so steep. <laughs> I thought we were done. We packed the van and headed to Spain to visit some of dad's friends. And we planned to film some pickups there when they told us about this great spot to go riding. Little did I know, we'd only scratched the surface of my discomfort with big hills. It's a little bit stormy here right now, I don't know if you can see that, but it's very beautiful. The ride started in a bowl with some hills that for people used to riding mud and roots felt super steep. Turns out the dirt in Spain lets you get way steeper than we're used to and way scarier. Probably another one of those situations where I'm like going to immediately regret this. So difficult. <laughs> Fair play. So uh, there's one thing that you should know about me. I am terrified of heights. Hey, old rider, you're 
clutch your arm is a bloody godsend. I mean, the more I ride this, the more I understand how Tarez does what he does. And obviously there is an enormous golf inability between me and him, but I also understand it. a surprising amount of grip in this place as well. I think me and him are so used to riding in places where the grip level is basically bloody nothing. That actually this isn't as bad as the steepness of it looks. From there, the hilltop trail circles back around and drops into the ravine. There were literally hundreds of trails everywhere, some steep enough that my ability was outweighed by the consequences and depth of my wallet. We followed more incredibly fun single track down the riverbed for miles. That really should have been the end. We sat on top of the hill where we started, filmed my outro, watched the sunset and were done. The next morning, we woke up so stoked on the ride, we headed out to do another lap. What's that saying? Never do one more run. Halfway around at the furthest point from the hotel, the Sherco stopped dead. No power, no bump starting, no blown fuses. We both forgot our tow ropes and set about trying to tow using a branch. In the end, we had to result to taking turns on pushing and coasting. The trail we chose was probably the most technical we'd ridden yet. Steep drops, big boulders, and a Sherco with no motor. It took around two hours to get out of that riverbed and that little extra dose of adventure seemed a really fitting end to this project. Well, at some point I have to draw this project to an end because I could quite happily ride this bike forever. It is a wonderful bike and I am blown away by how enjoyable it is to ride and how good it is. It is so damn fun and so capable. I just, I can't say enough good things about it. I'm gutted that I have to give it back. Thank you very much for your time and remember, life's better when you're riding.